Ladies and gentlemen, on this very, very special edition of NSFW Show, Marion Call joins us. We sing so many songs, and by we, I mean her. Also, we guess what her lyrics really mean and play Blitz Quiz. All that plus surprise pie ties. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Suspense Space. <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 184, recorded on June 25th, 2013. Marion Call and the Strum Bum. This episode is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. And Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW6. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue the summer music series. NSFW is proud to welcome... Mary and Call. Not every song has wings to fly And you know some dreams are doomed to die But that, my friend, is why That's why That's why there's carry for that song. It's kind of an oral assault, but uh, my friend Joel Hermanson and I wrote it because uh, it had to be written. So this is a song about spaceships because I understand spaceships better than I understand love and romance and breakups and the things everyone else writes about. So next time you're waking up on the space shuttle or the ISS, think of this song. Good morning, moon, love, how you doing? I've got this 
business with you today. Good evening, son. I'll see you soon. I wake on my own terms lately. Who's to say we're upside down? Who's to say we're falling if we miss the ground? Who's to say we're going nowhere if we like spinning round and round? Do -do 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 -do. Good morning, stars, love, how you are. Nice we finally see eye to eye. Good day to be a speck like me. Fast and free, that's how we fly. Who's to say we're upside down? And who's to say we're falling if we miss the ground? Who's to say? than hell right about now, thanks to the opening numbers by Marion Call. I'm Brian Brush. We joined, as always, by my inimitable co-host, part man, part robot, Jaguar warrior from Dimension X. It's Justin Robert Young. What's going on, JRY? I want to point out that's Jaguar the car, not the animal. Uh, I, uh, Brian, we have a hell of a show here uh, tonight. Can we get, we have a live audience. Let's get a round of applause for Marion Call. <laughs> That was that was amazing. That's my favorite of your songs, uh, Good Morning Moon. Uh, this this is insane, Brian. We have like an actual show. We have an audience. We have a music guest. I feel like we should just like, quit. We've well, done I mean, it. You know what it is? It's like we have some kind of bizarre split personality. It's like secretly we got hit in the head. We got kicked in the head by a horse. And now like... <laughs> I'm, we're living out a fantasy where we have an audience and then beautiful, talented people come and, and perform. And then the rest of the times it's you and me drooling at each other over Skype. It's just us <laughs> farting toward each other, not even on. Like we can't even get it get it right. Uh, Brian, uh, we have a hell of a show here today. Uh, we're going we're gonna to spend all uh, hour with uh, Marion and uh, her mysterious guitarist uh, who is here. Yeah, uh, see, don't introduce she got a name? Don't. No, no, he doesn't have a name. No. <laughs> in fact, I've been told that he pays $200 a day just to be in the company of Marion. The good news is, see, this is great. He comes to us with a problem and that he doesn't have an identity that he wants to reveal. Luckily, these guys down in the chat are at this very moment manufacturing monikers for him. <laughs> <laughs> One of them will be will be the completely tied to him. Uh well, I'll tell you what. Number one, uh, we are going to go... Guitar Llama. Uh, is that... <laughs> that is my real name. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we have Steve, uh, the Guitar Llama, SGL, his friends call him. Uh, or uh, as, as J. Fee, the Strum Bum. <laughs> I rather like the Strum Bum. Yeah. Well, you know, he's like a boxer. He's got a lot of names. Is this actually... Is this the Jeff Ruinum that we keep hearing about? Maybe. <laughs> Or the Idaho Lumberjack. Steve the Guitar Llama. The 
drum bum, Jeff ruin them. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we got a, we got a hell of a show. Uh, we are going to start off uh, by getting a little bit more uh, in depth in uh, your lyrics, because obviously you are an accomplished uh, lyricist as well as a singer. Uh, and, but also, stay tuned a little bit later. We have Blitz Quiz, right, Brian? We're going back yeah. to the well on Blitz Quiz. We got, well, I mean, back to the well. You're talking about, like, the return of the king is Blitz Quiz. Everyone loves <laughs> That's Blitz where Quiz. the king lives. It's, uh, it's, he it's said castles are for the birds. I prefer wells myself. Uh, <laughs> Duh. Yeah, we also have uh, we also have some other games coming up, but uh, but first, I definitely want to hear uh, all about how how what epic journey brought Marion here with us. Uh, well, uh, Marion, you are on the road for the next how long? Seventeen years. Seventeen six months. Yeah, six months. I'll, I'll get home at like Thanksgiving. Wow. So, yeah. And just so I mean, in case people are not aware, uh, just give people a thumbnail sketch of how you go across the country, just performing literally anywhere. Uh, I sort of tweet my way. My car is powered on tweets. Um, and, uh, <laughs> it's very green. It's very green, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It'll come straight out of my head. Um, I write and perform and record, and uh, I spend a lot of time at home in Alaska where I live recording and coming up with, you know, whatever whatever crazy things I get to come up with. And then I spend the rest of the year traveling around from house to house. Mostly I play house concerts. Sometimes I play comic book shops. Sometimes I play things like Wootstock or the Jonathan Colton Cruise. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... Um, we play in bizarre places like hair salons, gazebos, um, I, warehouses full of sunglasses. I've played some of the strangest <laughs> places. And now, um, you, it's all powered by just folks on Twitter. Whoever kind of volunteers and gets really involved in getting me to their town generally gets me to their town, given the long, you know, the long, uh, long yeah. view of it. If I mean, you, they might not get it this year, but I'll, I'll remember that they were helping out and come back again next year. And, and uh, I've been to all 50 states, all across Canada, over good Europe. God. Yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> uh, Brian, you were saying something? Yeah, Marion, uh, the, the, the fans here, the chat realm, as we call them, they're an excitable bunch. Is there anything, maybe some guidelines, some barriers of, like, what's a good place that you like to perform and maybe tell a story of something that didn't go maybe as well as, as it sounded on paper? Uh, well, usually, I mean, by now, I, I, I have known my fan base for a long time. There were few enough of them at the beginning that we kind of all got to be friends. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hey, I had fun in South Dakota. Don't knock South Dakota. Um, and uh, it, it tends to be that uh, now that I've done it enough, I kind of know where I'm going. Like, I know who, who I'm going to hang out with when I get there. And like, but come on, there has to be one in, Saul warehouse in, the... in there, right? Like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There have been some filthy houses. There have been some places we probably should have just walked away from. Brian was Spilled. witness to a little bit of this. Yeah. Change oh, the names. Change, change all the names to Steve the Lumberjack and give us the gory details. Oh. Yeah. So what? There, was there like a hoarder house where uh, at yeah. some point you hit a high note and a cat ran out of a pack of newspapers? I think so. Let's just say that I've had to write an extensive sort of writer of here's what you need to do to have a house concert. And mostly it says um, you need to kind of keep your hands to yourself, not oh. say too many foul things to me. And also when you say, we cleaned for you and there are <laughs> resident insect colonies in places there shouldn't be resident insect colonies and wet garbage like like there's clutter which is yeah. fine and like you know stacks of games and 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 we remotes with no batteries in them anymore sure. but th and then there's like wet garbage then there's yeah there's living cultures yeah then there's living cultures <laughs> and the, in generally if there are no sticky surfaces that shouldn't be sticky um so, then your so house it, is probably okay in general, it's safe to say that uh, that clean should never be in air quotes. You should never say we clean. You should for never you. say we clean for you. If if you have to say we cleaned for you, then usually <laughs> that means you don't have a concept of what clean <laughs> means. But but that said, we survived those experiences, and now we kind of like we uh, we play a lot of comic and game shops now. We just played Endgame in Oakland. Oh um, great! We played Mission Comics last time we were in San Francisco. It was a lot of fun. And uh, so we and wanted to too because they're they're bigger. They hold more people, and they uh, are kind of community spaces already. And they're fun. And oh they're, hell yeah. yeah! It's a great time. Well, all right. Before we get any uh, further, uh, you have a new live album on Bandcamp. I do. Correct? What I have, is it called? I have all my music on Bandcamp, all uh, of it. and a bunch of it's on iTunes, Spotify, eMusic, wherever else you get music. But Bandcamp is the best place to get it because Bandcamp gives you DRM free and compressed. Uh, with yeah, also you click, get paid. It's awesome. I mean, do, also, do, I get paid I, more. Also, I get paid more, admittedly, but I am a big DRM free. Like, I, I really, 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 really fracking hate M4As and stuff. So, gotcha. I, yeah. So, so download your uncompressed, even Og Vorbis <laughs> if you want, whatever it is. Uh, and, well, uh, what's, what's the new album called? No, the new album's called Live in Europe. It was kickstarted by Boom. a bunch of awesome fans in like sort of a year long, massive Kickstarter project. I'm sensing a Someone's trend. linking it in the chat already, which is awesome. 
And um, that's more like the live guitar guitar and me and typewriter and kazoo experience. And then gotcha. I also have a bunch of studio albums that have like the full orchestra and a bunch of accordion and banjo and stuff. And, and those are also there. So. so one of the things we wanted to do was uh, learn much more about your music and kind of explore, get an idea, sort of wrap our minds around it. And uh, 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 I'm, I'm going to put learn in air quotes because okay. we really have a very short uh, attention span and like to... Really, when we learn things, it kind of starts off with us just taking a subject and us just making up things. Right. That's okay. one so definition of learning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so right? Just, we, had an idea. we had an idea of a way to explore some of her greatest hits really quickly. You want to walk us through that? Uh, absolutely. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, Marion's going to give us the name of one of her songs. Me and Brian, of course, having just an amazing intuition. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's like like a county fair a level gift. skill for us. Uh, a gift. We're, we're going to tell you what your song's about, and then uh, you're going to let us know how close we were and mm -hmm. maybe sing a little part of it. Would that be okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Excellent. That sounds good to me. Uh, so, uh, Marion, without any further ado. It might even be better. It might even be better if the way we find out how close we were was to, to just hear her sing it, and then we could figure out if we nailed it or not. Okay. That well, could then, happen. Then there we go. Uh, uh, Marion, can you give us the first, uh, the name Some of the titles? first song? Right, yeah. I'm going to actually stand up so that I can sing. Because these chairs are weird. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's up with them. Uh, yeah, uh, let's try a, uh, how about Temporal Dominoes? Temporal Dominoes, Brian. Mm -hmm. I oh, got no, a lot I'm... of ideas here. You, you started off. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is about a time-traveling pizza. I totally, uh, it's it's the one where somebody makes a call. Yeah. And then in the middle of the phone call, he gets teleported back to the Stone Age. But everyone's sitting no, there. Wait, no, Brian, it's, it's somebody calls, right, for Dominoes. But yeah. who picks up? Alexander Graham Bell. And oh, that's right. And that's right. She forgot that she called the temporal dominoes. And yeah. then she finds out it's a party line. Like, that's the big <laughs> yes. thing. And, and then it's like, it's, and it's like Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, exactly. It's like one of those like late night commercials. And it's like, like with like the soft, like, like, do you want to talk to historical figures? And it's like Alexander Graham Bell picking up the phone. Thomas Jefferson. They're all here to talk to you. But the joke is... I just the, signed the Constitution! <laughs> and then and Martin Luther <laughs> King is like, is like, I have a dream to meet people from all time. <laughs> the end, the end hook is like, she, she's like, but seriously, where's my pizza? But dun dun shh. Yeah, like that's how that's how that song ends. I'm pretty. So sure. that's basically that's that's the song. So I now, like how it ended with the reading rainbow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't take our word for it. Uh, read it yourselves. Uh... Let's go ahead. This is uh, the actual song, Temporal Dominoes by Marion Cole. All right. Well, I'll do a little bit, and then I'll explain it, because it might make more sense after that. So. Okay. Um, I had never had it at night. 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 He likes the smell of the incense, and she likes her Indian food. Oh, the sweltering somewhere so intense, not a gesture is left unpursued, cause they're not in the mood to miss miracles, calling their half-baked assumptions, and paradigms toppling untried. Demolishing decades old hunches With their eyes all unraveled and wide At the top of the tide And nowhere to hide Temporal dominoes stacked to the sky Stuttering syllables strung out to dry When he dammed up the river of reasons That fish couldn't fly She mustered the metal to try I, I, I. Dude, nailed, nailed, it. nailed it. You were right there. Nailed it. That's right, <laughs> right on. Because I'm sure she cut it off. Round of applause. Come on, that was great. That was amazing. So that song makes a lot less sense without a million drums, <laughs> which is kind of what it's about. It's a, uh -huh. So that is a song that Phil Plate commissioned me to write on Twitter for a 
plate of cookies. Really? Yeah. Uh, Phil Plate. He's is a, a wily guy. He's a wily Plain. guy. He's the bad astronomer. He yes. writes Discover and, and many other things in JREF. And uh, Phil is a friend of mine. And one day I told him that all of my appointments had continued getting later and later, like little temporal dominoes, until they all fell down at the end of the day and I missed the last one. Ah. And he said, you must write a song called Temporal Dominoes. I commission it. So it's actually about astronomy, skepticism, and a trip to, like, you know that experience where you take a trip somewhere with a backpack and sure. go around in hostels and get lost and confused and understand what it's like to travel for the first time, and uh -huh. that blows all your ideas out of the water? That's what the song's about. But it's abstract and howly and no. fun. That was so. basically the same thing. Yeah. I yeah, think we I think we got close enough. There's a little bit yeah. of dig a walrus in there. Or dig, <laughs> dig a pony. Dig I mean, a pony. Dig a, a, dig a walrus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dig a pony. Fan over here. Yeah. yeah that right. would be a different song, uh, I Am the Walrus, if he was dug into a hole. And so same with I Am the Pony. I so, am the, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit presumptuous. <laughs> I am the pony. Get off my back. Yeah. I can talk. <laughs> uh, all right. So there we go. Uh, that's one. I feel like we're one and oh, Brian. Uh, Mary, well, you've, no, done, you've done very well so far. Can you give us another uh, title? Um, Princess Cupcake. Brian, I mean, obviously this one, easy. Right? Yeah. Slam dunk. It's not. See, this is it. It's it's not about adventure time. It's it's about a man, a deranged individual who believes that he's undeserving of human love and only has an erotically charged cupcake that he makes at home and it, it culminates with a climax. Would you say that's fair? Uh I can't add anything to that, Brian. Uh I'll tell you what, that's a that's a masterpiece. <laughs> Uh, let, uh, Marin, uh, survey says. I'm making faces. <laughs> Man, maybe that, maybe I'm going to have to add something to my tech writer. Hang on. <laughs> uh, all right, so Princess Cupcake. Let's go ahead and hear a little bit from, Princess uh, Cupcake? From Princess Cupcake. Um, it will only be sunny this week for the princess demands it. Dessert before dinner this week for the princess commands it. And there'll be candy canes in summer and Wednesday on weekends and an express lane at the airport for her and for all of her friends. And who, 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 who are we to disagree? with the princess. See, this is all... And Brian, that applause is for you. That's for you, Brian, because yep. you nailed it. I was, I was ready. You're the party star. I was ready to take the heat on this one. I was ready to take the fall and be wrong, but it's, it's clear. I see the scene perfectly. Like, that. It's the, the video, I'm pretty sure I saw the video somewhere, but it starts off... <laughs> of the cupcake, and you hear that beautiful song making all these promises about the way things are going to be, and it pans back, and it rotates, and there's just this hairy-ass naked man staring and drooling at yeah. the cupcake. That's, I'm almost certain of that's course, how. The cupcake. That's a very clear visual. Exactly, that's strategically <laughs> placed in his nether regions. You know there's an erotic bakery in Seattle that makes cup... Never mind. <laughs> Give us the third mind. song, Marion. Yeah, that, that song is actually about Nathan Fillion, and I keep hoping I'll have a chance to meet him eventually and say I wrote a song about you. It's called Princess Cupcake. You ever so. run into Nathan? I mean, like, you, you play uh, no, like, like, conventions and everything, right? Yeah, he's like signed, he signed one of my rain sticks once, but uh, uh -huh. other than that, I haven't gotten to meet him. Was that, so. like a, was that a nervous exchange? Oh, totally, totally. He's, he's, he's problematically hot in person, and sure. I, I had nothing important to say. I'm, I'm more of a writer's person. Like, I, I freak out a lot more when I meet Jane Aspinson than gotcha. I am when I meet Nathan Fillion, but he's still kind of problematic. Like, you know. He's got kind of a field, right? He's got like, a force field. He's got yeah. a force field that, that weakens even the strongest, most, you know, self-possessed <laughs> lady. It's just like, what can you do? So Just uh, damaging to mere mortals. It is, it is. So, uh, all right, stay what's the third me. song? Um, it Was Good For You Too. Brian, uh, it was it was good for you too. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going back uh, to Martin Luther King. <laughs> okay, well, of course, <laughs> it's it's about the civil rights movement. Uh, it's actually about the friendship of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Um, <laughs> oh, because a lot of people don't know that they used to be like best. They grew up actually in the same neighborhood and they used to play. Yeah, but then they at some point there were pivotal exchanges. And they saw the world differently from then on. And this is about the moment that they say goodbye to each other as they realize exactly. that they're on very this, different tracks. This, yeah, this is kind of like uh, 
to uh, the the you and I have memories longer than the road that stretches out ahead. You know, like yeah. that Beatles song, but with I civil rights all- figures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it's like uh, this is after. Uh, uh, yeah, this is. The, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, here we go. Hey, for those of you at home, that is the sound of the uh, the conductor in Brian's brain screaming, "No, no, no, no!" And you grab- you- <laughs> exactly. That was that was that was a that was a check swing. And if you would have went through on it, it was all Paula Dean. <laughs> it, that's exactly right. Boy, ob. Boy, ob. All right. Uh, well, uh, let's go ahead and, and hear uh, a uh, a part of uh, it was. What was it? It was good for you too. It was good for you too. Here we go. Yeah, this is a uh, Brian Ray on the guitar. By the way, I will give you his real name because <laughs> he's about to blow. He deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a song about a lady named Yolanda, or possibly Bridget, or Catherine, or Caroline, or Saffron. We may never know. mm -hmm. Oh, don't you cry now, sweetie. Just you put that gun away. All I did was say the things you wanted me to say. Oh, you thought you were handsome and strong and good in bed I just agreed with you and you swallowed every word I said oh honey did you really think you were special dear unique and did you really think I was so needy and so weak I robbed you blind I left you crying, I have played you for a fool, but you're the one who let me admit it. It was good for you to Night Sweet. So obviously that was uh about the That the was Nathan, Martin Luther King. Yeah. The, yeah, the Nathan Fillion show, uh Castle. Um <laughs> Yes, that was what uh, Stana sings. Of, as, of course, uh, yeah. yeah. Or no, uh, Drive, the the show that had Drive, like four yes. episodes. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to watch more of that. I was interested. I actually really dug yeah, it, I thought too. it was cool. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that uh, that maybe maybe we're just slightly off base on that. I one. think, yeah. Close. Pretty close. I feel like it's like, you know, you're only right if you're close in horseshoes, hand grenades, and guessing uh, Marion Call songs. I feel like that's so, the old adage, right? Yeah. No, oh, yeah, that's that's that that's why we're pretty the much well worn right. trope. Yeah, mm-hmm. right on. Uh, all right, well, we have one more to go. One more. One, one more. more to go. I feel like now we can we can go three for four. We can end with a winning record. Uh, what's the last title of the song? It's called Vera Flew the Coop. Vera Flew the Coop, Brian. I feel like you've had the hot hand on these. What is Vera Flew the Coop about? Was it was it Vera the Chick in the Golden Girls? This is about the Golden Girls, right? <laughs> Which one was Vera? I forget. Uh, I should know this because I'm from South so, Florida. They educate us about the Golden Girls. This is about, this is our about, cultural history. This is about the fifth Golden Girl, Vera, who never was there. Like she, <laughs> she, she had syphilis. Was she, she? No, and that was <laughs> Brian. That was in the uh, that was in the expanded universe, Golden Girls. So yeah, that like, was not canon. That, that was, was not, not Golden Girls canon. Very popular though. That's Very awesome. popular, Vera. The People confuse it sometimes. Girl yeah, that was who, ultimate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it took place, of course, uh, five years after the end of the canon Golden Girls. I keep wondering when they're going to reboot Golden that. Girls is part of the DLC, yeah. though, right? I mean, it's I think all, it's all... I was really excited when Disney bought Golden Girls because yeah, it means I keep we're going to get new Golden Girls with a lot movies. of explosions. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Vera, the, the syphilitic uh, golden girl. And then, of course, what happened to make her uh, fly the coop, Brian? Uh, was, well, she lost her mind. She went clinically insane, as, as often happens. She got, she got uh, syphilitic in, in, uh, encephalitis. Yeah. Uh, she started Enf- to become oversexed. Which, she, which of course, she, didn't stop her from getting her pilot's license. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, she was then recruited to fly 
uh, drug runs between Jamaica and Miami. Uh, landing uh, on beaches. Landing on beaches, of course, uh, until the Bermuda Triangle, which is how all these stories end. But she was uh, so crazy. <laughs> she was so crazy. She thought she was flying on a winged dragon uh, that was that was taken from the coop. In fact, actually, she she hijacked the dragon coop. <laughs> Yeah, the, dra- the the coops where the, they keep the... Of course. I, where, I mean, like, let's be honest. Where else are you going to keep a dragon? Actually, if I remember correctly, the twist of this song is it's because <laughs> she was having sex with C. Everett Coop, the Surgeon General at the time. <laughs> and together, they flew off into the Bermuda Triangle. I'm all, And then they, they go to an international vortex. <laughs> yeah, where they meet... <laughs> Marion Call. Mary Call. <laughs> and there is where the song is written. First person perspective. What do you say we go ahead and hear uh, part yeah. of Vera Flew the Coop? Me and Vera and the Dragons and Syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually about um uh this is actually about Jane's very favorite gun. Okay. Yeah, and, and we all know who Jane's very favorite gun is named after, so I'm sure that you don't need to be told. The legend of Vera, the famous female outlaw, sort of Kiss and Kate Barlow, Calamity Jane, yes. sort of folk hero. But I, mean, I thought duh. I thought we would, you know, I thought we would retell the legend anyway. For Just her. a little future elementary. female outlaw yeah. from space. Everybody Excellent. knows it, but you yeah. know, can't hear it too many times. Like boy named Sue, you know. So. <laughs> and uh, Vera flew the coop when she was only soft 16. She hopped the first and fastest train with some lousy libertine. He spun a pretty story and he stole away her youth. And everyone was shocked cause Vera only told the truth. Ah uh, no, her slip surprised him all cause Vera only told the truth. But Vera dumped that lion loud in the dust behind the train. He'd angled for a child, but he caught a heartless hurricane. He wasn't worth a bullet. She just pushed him off the side, and she thanked him for her freedom. She was eternally polite. Polite. Oh, Vera thanked him for his trouble, because Vera was so perfectly polite. Polite. Sing la 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 Oh la 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 Sing la 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 Ha oh 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 no no Yes, sir. No words. Nailed it yet again. Oh. You know what? We got, we got a gift. Some people know how to host entertaining talk shows. We know how to predict what songs. Very <laughs> call lyrics. What's it about? Uh, Brian, who brings us this very show? I was hoping you would know, sir. Because I, well, how about you, Phil? While I go grab my iPad. Uh, sure. All right. You know what? Uh, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> uh, uh, Marion. Yes, sir. We're uh, we're. we're and forgive me if you already mentioned this and I somehow already forgot it. Where are you headed after this? Um, right now, let's see. Tomorrow we will be in Redwood City at an Indian restaurant, although I think that that uh, show may be full already. Then we're headed to L.A. We're playing at uh, Genghis Cohen in L.A. on Thursday night at 9.30. That should be a good show. Some pretty cool people are coming from the L.A. crowd. It'll be fun. Do, do you have to drive everywhere? How often do you get to fly? As we you drive. Around? No, we drive. I have, a, I, have a, I have a car that goes everywhere with me. She's my baby. We're nearing 100,000 miles together in the last three or four years. Holy moly. Yeah, I drive a lot. Mostly, if people think being a musician is about music. Mostly it's about driving and email. Sure. <laughs> um, That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> and we have, uh, we'll be, we have four shows in the L.A. area, and then we go to Vancouver, B.C., Victoria. Huge show in Seattle. Uh, big show in Portland with Josh Kagan and the Double Clicks. Awesome. Which will be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, then I'm going all through the mountain states, and I'm taking, like, I, I'm kind of, like, sourcing suggestions for shows in all the mountain states right now, and then across Oklahoma, Missouri, 
uh, maybe Iowa back to Texas, <laughs> and then I'll do a run up and down the eastern seaboard, and if I'm lucky, then go to Europe. So, well, I'll and then I what. get to go home. <laughs> if uh, you live in any of those places, then go ahead and hit up at Marion Call on Twitter. Like she mm -hmm. said before, she'd, you know, if you're like, hey, come over here and play this thing, there's a very good likelihood she will play that thing. So go ahead and uh, check that out. But Brian, I yeah. want to let you know who brings us uh, this show. Yeah. Pro XPN. Now, Pro XPN, that's that uh, VPN service, right? So that you can, uh, no matter where you are, you don't have nobody snooping on all your business. You don't have nobody saying like, oh, we noticed that you have esoteric tastes we discovered, sir. Yeah. And it's like you, you want to have that stuff encrypted. So what? So when you talk about your Lock it down. Videos, yeah, lock it down. So when you're watching videos of, of hairy men and cupcakes, nobody has to know but you, man. Nobody. No. Encrypted. Oh, that sounds like a band from the 80s. Hairy, hairy man, and, man and cupcakes. <laughs> hairy but man it's, it's and like, the cupcakes. Yeah, there you go. Harry, M-A-N-N, -N, and the cupcakes. Uh, here's the deal. ProXPN is a global VPN. Uh, listen, uh, we all know that there's a lot of stuff going around about uh, the NSA. and You need to go ahead and get on ProXPN. Uh, this, make sure that uh, if and when uh, CISPA or, or you know PIPA, any of these six strikes kind of things ever come to fruition, you are protected in terms of the surfing that you do on these here internets. You, you know what I've done? And this is not even a joke. Uh, because once you once you sign up, right, you get multiple computers that you can install it on. And uh, and so, yeah, depending on which package you do, uh, I went ahead and installed it on uh, all my work computers so that when I boot up, it automatically pops on and says you're encrypted. Uh, now, granted, you know, when you go through a service, you know, some people are like, I don't want to take the time to encrypt or whatever. It's like, look, fine. If you got some kind of priority and you need to use your maximum bandwidth at the time then you can always disable it for that but like just get used to it as as a habit because you're just walking around everyone knows like like and, and you may not care now but like let's say when something happens down the road you want your whole history where everyone can see it piece together some kind of terrible narrative that may not be true yeah you're like visited this place and, and that then do means you throw your things. your laundry in the streets and invite yeah. the strangers who live near you and the government to sort through it and make judgments? No. no. Why do it with your internet? Here's the deal. Also, ProXPN makes your internet connection region-free. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say, you ever had one of those things where you go on the internet and they're like some British sites poking their finger in your face saying you can't watch it because you're American? I can't. Sorry, Matt, Brito. I got, I got a solution, and it's <laughs> six letters. ProXPN. ProXPN, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. And uh, plus also think about it. If you're ever at uh, somebody else's place, uh, there are some mischievous people out there who will install. So uh, our friend Darren Kitchen makes a thing called the pineapple, which all it does is be all like, I'm your friendly Wi-Fi logging everything that you do. And it's like they, they can sit there and they can watch what websites you're going to. And don't think like, oh, no, just because they don't tell you, they don't rub it in your face. And you haven't received a, a, a threatening email looking for blackmail yet. I'm just saying, best practice. Darren Gidgen will personally blackmail you, is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, I mean, here's the deal. Go to proxpn.com slash twit for more information to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 uh, a month or $74.95 for the entire year. But listen here, folks, we got a special offer for you. Use code uh, NSFW to receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account. Less than $5 a month. For the yearly plan, if you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. Go to ProXPN.com slash twit and sign up with the code NSFW. And we thank ProXPN for not only protecting freedom, but also for sponsoring NSFW show. Hey, and keep in mind, Steve Gibson loves him, man. Steve Gibson gave an awesome review on security Steve Gibson now. can't They're stop talking about him. They're super legit. He's running up and down this right now. You can, if you go ahead and <laughs> press your ear up to the wall, and you can hear Steve Gibson banging pots and pans, screaming about Pro XPN. It, it'll sound like gibberish because it's all encrypted, though. He's using <laughs> it will. It'll, it'll, you can't tell what it is because it ain't your goddamn business to know what it is. Pro XPN. <laughs> I offer code at SMW. <laughs> you want to play one of my all-time favorite games? You want to play a little Blitz quiz? Uh, all right. Well, let's explain um, Strumbum, Marion. <laughs> um, we like to play a game called Blitz Quiz. It's uh, the world's uh, favorite call-out game show. Uh, what we do is uh, we have a bunch of our fans let us know their number. We call them 
and uh, yell a uh, question to them, uh, a current events question. They have just a few seconds to answer it, uh, and then we all bet on whether or not we think that they are going to get it right or wrong. Well, well sort sort of actually. If, if if specifically what it is 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 this is like uh, <clears throat> this is like Hollywood Squares, right? It's, or it's like a gladiator tournament where we elect champions to compete on our behalf. So you'll you'll we'll each take turns on which of these fine folks from the chat realm who are all available right now to join us. You're going to pick a name, and that's going to be your champion. And they'll either do you right or they won't answer, in which case you automatically lose. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll let, we'll let Marion go first. Which of these names? Are we, are we building a team or choosing only one? Nope. No, just, no, you just, you, you, you get, you had to play the hand. So this is dealt. a Highlander scenario. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there can only be one at a time, which was the original yes, title. There can only be one at a time. Exactly. That would have been a less dramatic Highlander. <laughs> there can only be one in this county. <laughs> All right. Which of these names you want to fight on your behalf, Marion? Uh, we have a, a Davin, Captain Jack, 913. I'm going to go with Bill Meeks. I'm jumping on the list. Bill Meeks. Yeah. Bill Meeks. All right. So let's go ahead and grab his phone number right here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into this. We're going to give a call. And then we're going to call. Do you have a question ready to go, Justin? Uh, Maybe. Oh, look at that. I'm glad I actually thought to call ahead. Uh, I was actually <laughs> just realized that I forgot to do that. Yeah. And I was looking oh, things up. You didn't do that thing? <laughs> Chat room, somebody, somebody. Don't you throw... know current events from this week? No. Oh. Well, don't, don't you listen to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me? <laughs> I don't, actually. <laughs> uh, all right. Here, I, I got one. All right. All right. You got it? All right. Here we go. We're calling uh, Bill Meeks. As soon as he answers, he's going to be on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, this is not the number. I'm calling the wrong number. I don't know who I'm calling. Wild card. <laughs> All right, whoever it is. Whoever it is is going to answer and we're going to go. If it is. You did not choose my champion? You know what? I'm going to hang up on these jerks. Those jerks are fakers and liars. I'll tell you what. There we go. I Wash got it. out. Let's go ahead and call. Uh... Nope, nope. I got Meeks. I got Meeks. Call me. Here we go. Wait for it. The anticipation? Hello? Uh, NSA leaker Edward Snowden is currently in what international locale? Answer now. Uh, Moscow, I think. Correct! <laughs> we don't have we don't have the sound. You don't have a like, thing? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Can somebody? Is there a thing that I can get to plug in here? Because I can use the soundboard. Yeah. This is see. This is this is why we're so good at our job. We're Justin. really great at it. Well, Mary and you, you're 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 one to know so we're far. We're great at things. We're ready. We're we're great at guessing Mary and call songs and uh, being prepared for all of our bits and sponsors and soundboards and guest lists and questions <laughs> to ask on Blitz Quiz. We're really just uh, kind of awesome in that way. All right. Look, I'm gonna go next. Uh, out of this list, I'm going to pick uh, Sirid Dark, who I don't know and have never seen, and um, but who did post a link that was entirely too long in the pre-show. Bill Meeks, you were right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I, geez, he's just he's asking in the chat. Yeah. No, we already we just hung up on him. Just oh. screw. It. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're calling Sirid Dark. Bring it to us, Sirid Dark. Are you going to ring? Come on, ring. Come on. You, yes. Yes. Who is the current Secretary of State? Answer! Wait, who? I'm going to throw a random name out there and just say it's Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton? Uh, you suck at the game, boo! <laughs> Oh man, you failed me, Sarah Dark. Wait, hold on. Wait, Seth, is he still there? No, I hung his ass. He's dead to us. He just died in a fire. It was a terrible tragedy. It was a, it was, it was a bad thing. But what fire if he did? That'd be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, <laughs> Austin, wait, wait, who, who are you going for? Man, we should have had this plugged in way long ago. <laughs> uh, yep. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll tell you what. We're gonna roll with. Uh, 
Really, one of our one of our favorites here, Mega Vortex. Oh my gosh, that was a bold decision, sir. I'm gonna go with Mega Vortex, legendary uh, chat realm drunkard. Mega <laughs> Vortex. It's the question whether or not you'll even be awake to uh, to answer. All right, I'm hold on. Wait a minute, though, Brian. Wait, you you picking up? Wait for it. So it's it's ringing. You better get ready. You better get ready, bro. Wait. If he doesn't answer, that's a loss for you. I'm drunk. <laughs> President Blank of Brazil pledged to improve public service and fight government corruption in response to massive demonstrations in her country. Was it Laura Chinchilla, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, Lula da Silva, or Dilma Rousseff? I'll go with da Silva. I actually don't know. <laughs> Uh, no! Oh, damn it! Jeez, uh, Mega Vortex. <laughs> All right, so I far, no uh, Mary Call in the lead, one and zero to zero. You, you got a whole game. You got a whole bunch of names left here. Who do you want to, to fight on your behalf? Me, uh, I thought it was. I thought it was Strumbum's turn. Yeah, no, Strumbum, why don't you step up to the plate here? Oh, I get to play. Yeah. I got my eye on Dick Ran von Huntingt. <laughs> Dick Ran von Huntingt. That's my grandfather's name. <laughs> Dick Ran von Huntingt. Uh, taint. He was a winner. <laughs> he sure is. Come on, uh, Dick. All right, so let's go ahead and give him what a call. What you got, Dick? <laughs> Good old Dick Ran von Huntingt, which I'm sure this is not going to be a sex chat line. Go for Dick Ran. <laughs> Torrential rains caused unprecedented flooding in the Canadian province of Alberta, Quebec, Ontario, or British Whoa. Columbia. He nailed that before you even gave a choice. He just said Alberta. He said, by the way, eat crap on, on Dick Rand von Hunting Taints. Nice Dick. Which, and it, our, wow, uh, way uh, to be a dick about it. All right, all right. All right so I, I think I think the I think that the the battle lines are being drawn pretty clearly here. I just want to stay. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. I kind of feel like uh, like you guys should just battle it out for the win here. Me and Brian, we we've embarrassed ourselves. Oh, uh, you say you're saying that that like we're already we just got eliminated. From we're our out. Own, Listen, <laughs> we're out of our own game. It's gonna be Strum Bum versus Call. All right, uh, <laughs> for ultimate glory here. All right, uh, Strum Bum versus Call. Let's go with Marion Call first. Uh, I'd like Boy Blue, please, for $200. Boy Blue for Lemon Company. His phone number in. I'll paste this right over here. We'll give him a call. And it is ringing right now. Allegedly. Let me make sure I'm calling the right name. Boy Blue. Yeah, yeah here we go. You better here. know the answer to your question. I Wait. Oh, crap. Squeeze. Aaron Hernandez, a tight end for the NFL's blank, is being investigated in the murder of a semi-pro football player. Is it the New England Patriots, the Baltimore Ravens, the Oakland Raiders, or the Whoa. San Francisco 49ers? Wait, no, like, say the goddamn things before you yell. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. He got it right before you even said it, man. That's, That's my favorite sound. from me. <laughs> All right, dude. Strumbum, you're in All it right. to stay alive, man. You got you got these names, these champions for you. What's it gonna be? Here, actually, zombie I, I, Jesus, zombie Jesus, zombie Jesus, oh. a favorite of uh, the chat realm. All right, here we go. Gonna call some zombie Jesus. Get him on the phone line here. And wow, the chat is exploding. Sure. They love zombie Just Jesus. Answer the phone, and Google Voice will try to connect you. God damn it, zombie Jesus! Answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Should yell louder. <laughs> is he there? Zombie Jesus? Yes. The Taliban opened up a diplomatic office in blank, a move that led the Afghan government to cancel scheduled peace talks with the militant group. Was it Qatar, Saudi Arabia, 
Pakistan or Iran? Iran. <laughs> ah! Ah! You lose. Jesus. So long, zombie Jesus. Well, mm. I'll tell you what. Um, I feel I like... Uh, you got a champion. Well, no, Brian. I feel like we're going to invoke... Uh, Double points round. Oh wait, so oh, there's there's one there's one more round. There's one this, more round. It's is four four thousand points. So okay. Marion right now is, is that in the double? lead with two. Is is that double? Uh, I went to public school in Florida. Um, <laughs> Close. <laughs> so uh, uh, now here it is. Uh, we are. It's gonna be uh, Strumbum versus Call, and uh, Call you get. The, you get to say whether or not they're going to get it or not. You want to pass or play? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can. You can pass or play here. Wait. What? So uh, I'm going to read you the question. All you right. name the person and you say whether or not you think they're going to get oh. it or not. Oh. So and this is like this is like calling the ball before people. you get it in the pocket. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So here's the question. That is definitely All right. I want to find a good one. Okay. Daredevil Nick Walenda successfully completed a quarter-mile tightrope walk 1,500 feet above the Little Colorado River Gorge in blank. Uh, let's go ahead and see the uh, the names here. Can I just answer? No. <laughs> yeah, you got to say whether or not they'll I wanna get it. I want to win. Uh, so do you think that any of these people will get it or do you want to pass it on to the strumbum I think Vincent 404 will get it Vincent 404 okay. is who she selects All right there you go Vincent 404 calling him on the phone right this minute That's Where are the ladies by the way I mean, in the on. chat room uh, Oh there are yeah, we don't skew too many ladies Dick Rand was a lady I thought Oh yeah yep. Daredevil Nick Walenda successfully completed a quarter mile tightrope walk 1,500 feet above the Little Colorado River Gorge in Wyoming, Arizona, New Mexico, or Nevada. I'm going to go with Arizona. Yes from me. It's crazy it's with the sound. <laughs> Do the Zelda one again. Do the Zelda one again. <laughs> Here we go, everybody. Let's get a big round of applause. Huzzah. Marion Cole wins yet again, as she has all night. Brian, we embarrassed ourselves on so many levels. Uh, in that particular yeah. segment. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, I think we did pretty great. I, I like that joke where we pretended to be totally unprepared and to not have anything. And the way we really sold the joke by, like, letting dead air just sit there for a really long time. Brian, it's not dead air. It's called suspense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. You know what? I'm in suspense. Also, it's over. called dead air. <laughs> <laughs> who, else, who else is paying for this episode? Squarespace, Brian. Oh, my God. Squarespace is my favorite, fastest, and easiest way to make a blog portfolio or any other kind of website. Because if, if, if we wanted to make, like, a tribute to how awesome our suspense spaces are, because that's what we're calling them now, suspense spaces, <laughs> brought to you by Squarespace. In fact, every time you hear what some what might hear silence, a moment of silence, that's the suspense place and, brought to you by Squarespace. And what we want everybody to do is cut those sounds out. And post them on the Suspense Space <laughs> blog that That's you can right. set up on Squarespace. Suspenseplace.squarespace.com by the seashore. <laughs> uh, here's the deal. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store. Brian, do you think Squarespace was awesome before last fall? I, I did. I always thought they were awesome, and I thought they couldn't get any better, and I defy you to prove me wrong. Shut your dumb mouth. Squarespace keeps rolling out the new product, features, integrations, and templates. Uh, you know, they got plans starting as low as $8. You hear that? Uh, $8 is like nothing, man. I, I might be sitting on $8 now. Software and hosting. Squarespace is a real value. Not to mention, exceptionally well-designed. You ever seen a Squarespace site you didn't want to kiss on the mouth? 
Well, and that's the thing, man. It's like, think about how dumb half the people are making these sites and how untalented they are, but they all look like wizards. Squarespace is like auto-tune for your web design capability. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect pitch in the graphical design category when you go on Squarespace. And you want to know what? Fast and easy to use. Uh, powerful, flexible e-commerce solution. And the best mobile experience. Uh, here's the deal. We want you to go ahead and sign up for a free account. Go to squarespace.com, and uh, you don't need a credit card, in case you were wondering no. that. You can you, you be up, up on the online uh, working out your design within, like, like, uh, like, a minute. Remember we set a world record for the fastest way to make a website ever with yep. it with Squarespace, and it's, and it's actually in recordsetter.com, world record books? Uh, here's the deal. If you decide to purchase, you can go ahead on over to NSFW, use offer code, rather, NSFW6, get 10% off the first purchase on new accounts. And uh, don't forget about free domain registrations for annual plan customer subscriptions. That's squarespace.com. Use offer code NSFW6. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Uh, hey, man. Uh, so what else we got going on? We got to talk about the movie draft. We got to check in on that. Um, Brian... Can I confess something? We need to investigate ties you've had in the past. <laughs> pies? Pies. <laughs> pies and ties. Your <laughs> pie ties are uh, not above reproach, my friend. Man, why are you always dogging on my pie ties? I'm the Edward Snowden of your pie ties. I'm <laughs> leaking all over the place. You're exposing my pie ties. That's not right. Uh, yeah, man, it's really weird to watch this whole... Uh, the, I mean, not that it's not fascinating to watch, but the, the crucifixion of Paula Dean, man, for something that she said 20 years ago. Tremendous visual was, image. Yeah. Boom, crucifixion Karen. of Paula Dean. <laughs> <laughs> the Photoshop's incoming. Oh, sweet Lord. She's just up there. It's the, the crucifix is deep fried. <laughs> <laughs> She's munching on it. <laughs> I'm up here, y'all. Um, and dragons whipping her, like blood flaying her as she's up there on the <laughs> <laughs> it's cross. Uh. <laughs> I, I have, may have tasty souffles, y'all. Um, so yeah, that, <laughs> that happened. Uh, so Paula Dean, of course, in the news because uh, she's being sued by somebody who used to work at a restaurant in Atlanta. As part of that deposition, uh, she admitted that she has freely used the uh, the N-word as well as other uh, made some other inappropriate racial comments, including wanting to theme a party in a way where all the uh, African-American waiters would be dressed in period costumes that would be appropriate for a, a slave era uh, party where people would be, uh, be at a party with uh, slaves serving them. So, right. uh, yeah, she's fired from Food Network because it can't do that. Boom. And then the weirdest one is them saying, like, uh, the other networks, like QVC, they're like, they're like, hey, are you going to fire Paula Dean? They're like, uh, I don't know. Should we? We're just kind of watching things right now. See which oh, way so all the other, all the other networks that she also works on yeah. is like, whoa, wait and see. Let's see yeah. if this slave thing buries her. That's right. <laughs> well, and then then she that cancels another terrible visual image. She, she cancels her appearance on uh, so one of the morning shows, and uh, and instead releases a video uh, that's I've heard like being crazy. Yeah. What, what do you mean by being crazy? Like she's not she's not like she's not like playing basketball. Crazy would be real, like I like the same things you like, and just all these terrible. <laughs> Uh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, like, crazy, like, the Looney Tunes definition. Like, she's just going, like, and, like, hitting herself with a hammer. Um, no, I mean, she was just very jittery, and she's like, uh, I mean, obviously, listen, her world is crumbling around her. I don't mean crazy yeah. like it's unreasonable. She has completely seen her world uh, be ripped apart. But none of that is as interesting as your ties to this situation. <laughs> You ain't, gonna, you ain't gonna rub her butter stink on me. You Am gotta... I not? Go to the videotape! Oh, no! Oh. Not, didn't we? The graham crackers, the marshmallows, <laughs> the chocolate. All the tables All right, have... hold on. Pause it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you tweeted this out last night. Yes. Uh, and by the way, feel free to leave the show in protest now that you know 
that half the show is in league with Paula Deen and her racist views. Uh, I would not look down on you. Um, but, Brian, you tweeted this out last night. Uh, yeah. But- why? This was, uh, uh, well, I don't look, because, because uh, it's, man, that's a good question. I'm suddenly regretting <laughs> that, that was a terrible decision by me. Uh, no, it's, uh, uh, look, it's like whenever, whenever there is, it's, it's as, no, okay, look, let's say Edward Snowden uh, w- happened to be on a show with me. Then I'm going to tweet out like, hey, man, here's me and, and Eddie S. Uh, uh, Rose to Marshmallow. Just in this case, it was, uh, it was cooking Hitler. Cooking Hitler? Maybe that's how That'll she be the new show. It. That'll yeah. be the new show on exactly. the Food Network. Hey, y'all, welcome. I have, it's Cooking Hitler. And she I have has a question a about your hair, Brian. What? I have a question about your hair, Brian. Yeah, my guy. In guile. that clip. Oh, wait, 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 wait uh, yep. It's sure. concerning me. Why? Because it's it ain't, look, it, I know it, it ain't going to reach out of the screen and poke you. It's, uh. but it is, it is. What were you way- trying to say exactly with that look? <laughs> I'm trying to Were you say, trying to say King Koopa? I was trying to say uh Sonic Boom. <laughs> this was uh this was like of course back in the day. This it's like was like video uh, game boss. No, look at no, that. Look yeah, at that. No, look at that. It, it's it's really is ridiculous. Although not as ridiculous as that tucked in shirt as I pointed out on Twitter last night. Oh, yeah. That is the real crime. It really is. <laughs> you you could make out with Paula Dean and say I agree with everything you said backstage and it would not be as bad. Are you eating as fire? Your shirt. Yeah, yeah. See this is what's so weird is is like I've I've atrophied as a as a performing as magician. A hair piece. Like enough people know me as some jackass over Skype on Twitch that uh, that when somebody sees it, they're like, "Wait, do you do something more interesting than yell from across the country?" I like this. I like that you think that being a carnival freak show is a step up from what we do now. You're like, <laughs> I used to be known for a talent, a real yeah. talent, like swallowing fire in I'll front t- of I'll people t- who would throw <laughs> shekels at me. I'll and now what- all I do is yell on the internet. I'll tell you this much. There's never been a stage show where I got halfway through. I was like, oh, man, I didn't even bring any of the props. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't have a two-man act. <laughs> yes. That's what I needed. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was a wild experience going out there. Uh, my mom came out to this one because she was a Paula Deen fan, uh, which I'd, I'd be interested to know. You want to call she- your mom right now? See how she thinks about Paula Deen? Oh my god, I kind of do. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> she's definitely asleep right now and would not appreciate being up. ambushed. Wake her, like, listen, mom, you got to understand. Sometimes we got to wake you up and ambush you to find out if you're a racist. <laughs> or at the very last. Very least a racial sympathizer. Uh, do, do you think? Do you think like she? Do you? Th- do you think she's just done for? She's just cooking Hitler from now on. <laughs> I like to think that that series, the cooking Hitler series, is she just makes different uh, dishes that represent a part of Hitler's body. So it's uh, like she has like a ham hock for the she's face. She's actually cooking it. So at the by the end of the season, first season, you have assembled like a, a Hitler golem of food. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Say the incantation, and the whole thing springs to life. <laughs> <laughs> starts I didn't dancing. see that coming. Where it comes, to, it comes to life and dances a jig. <laughs> sure. Oh, not right. It's it's funded in Hollywood. So one of our live studio audience just made a really inappropriate Holocaust joke. I couldn't help it. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do here on the NSFW show. We incite. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I, I feel like do you want to watch? Is there anything really embarrassing by it, or or? or? Well, I mean, it's actually it's actually bland. I mean, I'll tell you what. To be honest, stuff like this food appearance thing, like any time I ever did a TV appearance, uh, pre because this is pre scam school. Like I would do a few TV appearances, and it's like I knew the beats I had hit were the magic tricks I was doing. But outside of that, I would just stand there like a grinning idiot. Well, yeah, actually, like, I want to I want to just point out, uh, like, Brian, hey, go I'm back okay. to the very beginning when Paula sure. Jean is just you know, running her yap. Uh, you uh, you do like this I'm thing leering. with your hands. It looks like I'm leering at her. I'm just like I'm like, like oh, yeah. but like you get you start to like move your hands back and like you're rubbing them together. Like oh, yeah. you better wait, lady. I yes. had some. You're gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna do some things that are gonna make you in big trouble in seven years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's grabbing on your arm. Look at that. Yeah. Did you get it's... a sexual vibe from Paula Dean? 
Uh, if bisexual, you mean like she just wanted to rub butter on my chest, then yeah. <laughs> But but anyway, but like like looking at all that old TV crap, it's like, man, I didn't know how to how to how to contribute to a conversation or to act like I didn't care, or whatever. I think the most I do it is I punch her souffle, or or s'mores. Also, thing. how short is Paula Dean? Because she is shorter than you. I know, and that's saying something, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's like a little butterball, a little yeah. racist butterball. Oh my God! That's you're gonna get that on a T-shirt and wear it. <laughs> no, that's I'm pitching alternate titles to Cook and Hitler. I want to make s'mores now. Yeah, no, there's uh, it's all Brian making s'mores there. Yeah, you can come make s'mores at my party sometime. Sure, if you want them to taste like death. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's why don't like, you brush your teeth? No, yeah, no. The problem is like you know, it's like this the poison that you use for fire eating is you know all this this cancer causing fuel, and they're all in some producers just like, well, we do a cooking show, we want to do a hot and cold thing, so let's get a fire eater. It's so like half the things involve me, you know, spitting poison onto the food, and then uh, and then her handing it out, and people going, hmm, benzene tastes great, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Brian. On that note, uh, I, I feel like uh, we are at the end uh, of our of our show here. No, nope, we're not, sir. Nope. We still got a little thing called checking in on the movie draft minutes, son. And then you would think that would be a good time to play it. Man, but this is uh, this is suspense spaces, Brian. This is what makes the show good. Man, how did I get here and not set up any of my props? That's Welcome so messed up. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute for week of June 24th, 2013. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. 15 movies down and 15 more to go. Let's see who's number one this week. Tom Erickson, sixth place with Monsters University bringing in $82.4 million this week, bringing his total to $139.8 million. Cargill's in fifth place with $168 million. Scott Johnson's in fourth place with $266.1 million. Sarah Lane's in third place with World War Z bringing in $66.4 million this week, bringing her total to $340.8 million. Brian Brushwood's in second Second place with $492.1 million. And in first place with $539.7 million, it's Justin Robert Young. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of June 24th, 2013. Dude, uh, based on his performance, Tom Merritt was actually really, really excited on frame rate. And I quote, because it looks like I might not be in last place, <laughs> is what he said. Yeah, no, he uh, definitely got after earth right in the butt um i i'm not going to win brian you won do you think so yeah. uh, i i think uh i, I needed think man of steel to not fall off like it did and it did so basically i need uh all the children in america to die so they don't go see despicable me too you know what it boils down to you need smurfs 2 to be more popular than despicable me too or like that or <laughs> that it could be that instead of all the children in america dying <laughs> <laughs> but but like and I don't see that happening because I certainly haven't seen product tie-ins for every conceivable possible way to promote Smurfs too. There's a Britney Spears song out. Is there? <laughs> Who's that again? I look right. I think I think she's like friends with with Paula Deen back in the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I I think I think you have this in the bag, but we will see how it plays out. So, uh, yay for me for being in first place for five seconds. Yeah, no, I, I think you're going to stay. Well, I mean, you got it a while till Despicable Me Too comes out. Yeah, and then, and then just rams it right in my butt. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have plenty to go. If you are watching live, uh, we have another uh, another bunch of songs. But uh, before we, uh, we we you sing us out of here, uh, Marion, again, where can people find you? Um, you can find me at MarionCall.com. All my music is there. You can stream it or you can download it from Bandcamp because Bandcamp is awesome. Um, and you can find tons of videos of performances in various places on YouTube. I have a channel, youtube.com slash Marion Call. It's really hard to find. <laughs> also, facebook.com slash Marion Call Music. Also, twitter.com slash Marion Call and like flickr.com slash Marion Call and like whatever.com slash Marion Call. I'm probably around there. All I right. live on the internet. And uh, we're doing up and down the West Coast, LA on Thursday, Seattle and Portland coming up pretty soon. Those are listed on my website. And, uh, the rest of the U.S. hang in there. <laughs> <clears throat> well, listen, I will tell you what. Uh, if you have not seen Marion live, absolutely uh, go. That is amazing. Was that? Uh, that, that was incredible. Was, that was Paula Deen. Uh, <laughs> Paula Deen the Avatar. That's yes. amazing. 
Is she? You think she's a fire? Uh, oh, I don't know. I think she's fired. If that's yeah. <laughs> I think her special talent is something that she can apologize for 20 years later. Uh, all right. And uh, Strumbum, you have anything else to say? <laughs> Nothing else to say. All right. Thanks, uh, what is uh, What is the song that you're going to be playing us out to tonight? Uh, um, the last song is requires me to... Reenlist my typewriter. This is Madeline, my typewriter, by the way. She's one of, uh, I have a few different typewriters. This one is named for Madeline Lingle um, and uh, and has been to 49 states with me. She's my baby. <laughs> Which this, one? W w what's one's missing? Hawaii. Oh. Yeah, I brought, I, I, brought, uh, I brought Lily Okulani, my Hawaiian typewriter, to Hawaii. <laughs> Outsourced it. Uh, what is the, uh, what's the name of the song? This is called uh, The Nerd Anthem. Not to presume I could write an anthem for all nerds, but this is about, uh, uh, since we were kids and had whatever defining experiences made us nerds, a lot of us have grown up and changed. And I think that to look at someone and say whether or not they are a nerd based on how they look, how they dress, what color or gender they are, how tall or short they are, or what franchises they do or don't like is one of the sillier things I can imagine because I was a nerd before I saw Star Wars for the first time. I was a nerd because of who I was inside. There we go. There we La go. Ladies and gentlemen, again, mm -hmm. Marion Call with the Nerd Anthem. There we go. And one, two, three. All the cool kids keep enthusiasm rationed. Right down to the last explosive ounce. But I'd rather indulge my many passions. Even if my square itude is overly pronounced. Perhaps I do not strike you as a geek Without the horn-rimmed glasses And knee-high Argyle socks But nerdery is more than wardrobe deep I'm a nerd down in my heart And that's where nerdhood rocks I am better acquainted than a good girl ought to be With Aragorn and Yosef Bridge and Worf and Hal and Han and, But you don't really know me and my culture don't control me So don't you pigeonhole me Cause my fears are set to stun Oh, I have been a nerd Since long before I could have heard Bookish girls should look and act a certain way And, and I'll still be a geek When I am utterly antique Because I do not care what normal people say Oh, one, two for my superpowers draining fun from parties But if I am a misfit I'm in good company With Auden, Austin, Hawking, Galileo, and Ben Go And countless other weirdos Whom you really ought to know So stow your expectations I won't fix your PC And I don't mind being underrated or ignored the world is much too interesting to entertain ennui So I won't ever play it cool And I won't ever once be bored No, I have been a nerd since long before anyone heard Pale and scrawny was the latest fashion trend And, and I'll still be a geek after nobody thinks it's chic Cause I don't need your approval in the end No, I don't need your approval in the end. Thank you. And there we go. All right. I think we're done. Uh, Jammer B? You got the music going? That's uh, brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, Another ladies and gentlemen. Suspense. Suspense place. spaces. <laughs> There we go. Again, Marion, 
Thank you so much. Uh, just amazing, as always. Listen, guys, go out and see uh, Mary Live Strum Bum. It's time to Killed it tonight, go, bro. And I'm so I'll tell you what. Uh, thank you, everybody in the audience. Thank you guys very, very much for coming out. You guys are amazing. Uh, Brian? Yeah. I'll see you next week. The show is I see you next Tuesday. I was about to say it every been episode. Been every episode. Every episode. See you next Brian Yeah, I stepped on it again. We're awesome. <laughs> that was, that's the pro XPN mess up. Dying of fire. Then you spend a single moment. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching live, uh, make sure you stay around because Marion's going to play uh, a few more songs for us and uh, we're just going to sit here and chat and have a good time. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Until she just leaves. I'm just going to bore her until she walks out. <laughs> She's like, this is getting really awkward. Uh, excellent. Uh, what well, we're going to do, uh, we got to do like billboards and stuff like that and then we'll go right into it. Thank you guys for coming. It would have sounded really weird if there was like two people clapping. Yes. Yeah. Thank you really, really a lot. For, yeah. And also, uh, the pulver in the chat room says just make sure nobody makes anything unnecessarily sticky, or else Marion is right out of here. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, Marion. Yeah. Would you like to play another song? Yeah. What would you like to play? We will play um, like three or four. Okay? Well, sure, yeah. I mean, but, but let, let's go one at a time. What is... Uh... <laughs> All at once. All yeah. at the same time. At the same time. Uh, what is this one? Uh, let's do Got to Fly. Didn't do that last night. Yeah, this is called Got to Fly. This is a title track of my record that is um, actually... Uh, <laughs> that is actually officially a licensed Battlestar Galactica and Firefly merchandise. What? I'm that nerdy. Quantum mechanics, they make a they make like a ship replicas, like high end yeah. fan props and stuff, you know. So they uh they uh funded and produced this record and they commissioned me to write a bunch of songs about Firefly and Battlestar Galactica, which I did. Yeah. And now Because you played a couple yeah, Firefly I played, I played related. A couple night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, and those were from that project. Those are from that record, yeah. Some of the ones I did today were from that record. So And it's it's one album or two albums? It's one album. It's one album. Uh, I, have, just I have like Battlestar five albums, and, but and one album Firefly. called Got to Fly is Battlestar Firefly nerd stuff specifically that is actually licensed. So yeah. Oh. So my song about Jane is like cleared. So So is it like canon? It's no, it's not canon, but it is a, a fan canon, I would say. Fanon? Because it was, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting old now. It's like five years old. Yeah. So yeah. people are, uh, it's, it, it is widely sung at conventions if you hang around the brown coat booth. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. We occasionally I mean, that's gotta do that. be like the coolest thing And we'll be at like ever, San Diego right? Comic Con and which we, we, we do San Diego every year and we go to the brown coat meetups and everybody pulls out the hats and it's the best time. It's just so fun. It's really fun. Man. All and right. And there's no kids in the room. I can do the grown up version. <laughs> Of the Jane song, but uh, uh, but I, for now we'll do the title track from that record. It's called "Got to Fly." Got to fly. And Mary this is and about uh, this is about Lieutenant Kara Thrace, Starbuck. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also an answer to the question someone asked me: um, Why should we have publicly funded space travel? And mm -hmm. they said it in that exact voice, and I <laughs> couldn't think of a pithy answer. They were also asking me like, "Why do you do art? Art is optional. Art is pointless. We don't need art to live." Who or is eat. this guy? Um. They were mansplaining. <laughs> Have you met many mansplainers? No. He was mansplaining. What is? Um, uh, give, give me a, a definition of mansplaining. When men explain what it is like to you to be female and be a feminist and be and deal with woman things, and uh -huh. they explained it to you from their deep knowledge base of of manliness, gotcha. and their understanding. Of, yeah. So, Brian, are you yeah. a mansplainer? Uh, I I as uh, aspire to be. <laughs> Did you get your uh, Did you get your degree in mansplanation? I, uh, I I I'm a manscaper. Does that count? Someone a manscaper? Yeah, manscaper is. I, I would uh, yeah I would pursue that instead. Someone wrote a good explanation on the uh, chat there, which is the tendency of men to assume that they know more than a woman about any topic, regardless of what the topic is. Particularly though, being female. But this person I mean, was mansplaining I, things, and he was mansplaining my job to me about like how art is optional and what's the point of it. Yeah. But, uh, so. I mean, you could explain it that way. I personally think it's better. I mean, the more sophisticated way to explain it would be. Yeah. I realized I painted myself in a corner because I was going to pretend to be a mansplainer. I agree, Brian. <laughs>
Which uh, would be right. funny for, for me because I could watch you be uncomfortable and that would be entertaining. So. <laughs> I like to call that the second half of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Every show. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, here we go. Boom. All right. Here we go. And I'll try not to gesticulate in your face. No, it's fine. I'm, so. I'm going I'm to clear the way for your, for your wild gesticulations. They happen. It's the hair. The hair goes everywhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you for calling, leave me a message please Tell me what day and what month and what year it is Cause I'm not here and no baby I'm not home The lights are on for sure but baby the occupants have flown I'll catch you later love, uh oh, a goodbye Got to fly, I got to fly, I got to fly Stomach all of this reality when you could go circle the stars. You wouldn't believe where I've been. Just this week I'm into freakishly fabulous finds. My corpse has been here, but my mind's covered miles of craving altitude. So can't they step aside? Got to fly. Oh, I've seen such things. I've been tasting lights and touching voices And you can't clip my wings I'll be back to pay the bills But practicality may poison my joy So let me go to recognize I got to Calling, leave me a detailed message, please Tell me what day and what month and what year it is Gonna bring you back the comet and the sword and the flower Gonna mount a rescue love, I'm gonna lay siege to the tower I need adventure love, so let me off this rock Because I fully understand How the minute that I live I gotta trip, I gotta take, I gotta call I gotta make, I gotta run, I gotta do I gotta follow up, I gotta clean I gotta send, I gotta file, I gotta get, I gotta get But the views beyond compare, so if you wanna count, shotgun on my rocket, well you order, baby. Let's, let's, baby, let's, let's, let's fly. Oh, 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 oh. Got to ditch the sad cynic saying we're all the same. Saying we got no really real adventure left to our name And no love and no truth and no spark and no mystery But I gotta take it off this rock And I'm history There you go! Holy crap, It's amazing! <laughs> that, uh... He's, he's pretty awesome. No, everybody, uh, for the record, and, and I don't know who is, if we're going to put this as part of the episode, but just to illustrate the, the chat realm, which, mm-hmm. let me say, of course, they're, they're the best part of this show. <laughs> However, uh, at times, specifically when it comes to musical guests, they can be uh, very... 
picky. They have they have very sensitive ears. Uh, and I hang out on the internet. I, I'm you are. I'm sure you are aware. Uh, but nothing but compliments about not only uh, your singing, which is obviously amazing, but also Brian. Uh, just. Uh, Nothing but praise here. They're, they're giving you clout with a K. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? Uh, it, it's good. Give me clout. I don't, I I'll tell you what, listen. I, I don't know how you feel about the nickname, but I feel like the le the, the, the legend of the strum bum uh, has begun tonight in Petaluma and will stock the, the hills of the internet. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a little strum bumming later. on my own. Yeah, I just want to wander around it's pretty Petaluma. Pretty appropriate nickname. Sure. Mm -hmm. You can just you know wander the hills and dales of Sonoma County strum and uh, that strum that bum. <laughs> I do. Uh, My Twitter, for the record, someone asked, is this is B Ray? B R A Y. There we go. Brian, have you ever heard of Mary before? No, not before tonight. Okay, although... I haven't heard you either, Brian. I'm sorry. Everyone told me I was dumb, but I mostly <laughs> listened to classical music growing up and, and Oscar Peterson and Ella Fitzgerald. So and I'm not catching fire up. Readers? I'm ca no, I actually know a bunch of fire eaters in Seattle and, and, and sword swallowers and stuff, and but uh, I just didn't happen to know you. Sorry. No, it's it's. So trust this me. is a good. Will you perform now? Uh, oh, man, I, I can't believe I didn't bring my props. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of which, actually, I was gonna go ahead and bug out because it's creeping up on 11:30, and I don't know if you saw my Twitter. I I maybe kind of pedaled 45 miles today. It was it was a long one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Brian. Good show. Dude, good show. It was a lot of fun. Marion was fantastic. Brian was amazing. Chat Realm brought it as always. Uh, everything was great. Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll hang out for a little bit and uh, talk to Marion. We're in, she's right. going to play and, some and, songs. Uh, if, Chad, if Chad is still there, uh, Chad, I, I do very, very much want to spend an afternoon. Uh, we, could try, we can get nutty. I actually have a, uh, a USB... A USB thing, although I, I don't know if I have the mixer for it with mixed minds. Uh, Chad is not here, but we will pass along the message. Chad's probably listening. As we all know, Chad, as soon as he leaves the building, immediately tunes in to listen to Twitter at all times. And yes. Times I hurting. hope everybody doesn't immediately bomb Chad's Twitter and say, uh, Brian was asking for you. Also, I can't believe you said that ethnic slur. Strumbum from Austin? Is that right? That's right. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's yeah, dude. Well, we're both. From that's Austin. where I live. <laughs> you you're from Austin? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm in Austin right oh, now. That's cool. What, that's I'll be back there soon. Yeah. yeah, you guys can hang out. Yeah, I can strum your bum if you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Pro bum right, strummer. Good. I'm into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And Brian with a flash of Paula Deen riding <laughs> riding a Twinkie into infinity uh, is gone. Uh, how long have you been doing the touring around the country with Twitter thing? Like, at what point was that scary? It was very scary in uh, 2008, 2009, both because Twitter was pretty new and it was all early adopter kind of uh, uh, kind of feeling. We didn't know what was possible, but also it was super exciting because the things that were possible, like I remember the first few tweet ups starting to happen yeah. on a large scale and it was like the most thrilling thing in the world and we we had them in Alaska and we just started going like a bunch of my best friends in Alaska now kind of came from that first crazy Twitter boom in 2008, 2009 when I found people based like not on happening to run into them anywhere but just solely on common interests and on living where we live, you know? It was really cool because I've had friends online for a long time but they've always been all over the place. Twitter suddenly started me meeting them in real time and real space all the time, so. Well, let me ask you this, because you are uh, very much known for your interactivity with your audience. You have, you're an amazing talent, you got a great voice. Uh, is Was there a point when the interacting with your audience and the way that you tour now kind of changed your expectations for what it was to be a musician who made her living singing? No, actually, I would say instead, I only started being a musician who sang for my living because I saw that this kind of life was possible. Like if, if so, uh, it was it was an impossible dream. Well, no, it before. wasn't even a dream. I just wasn't interested. Like gotcha. the the idea of writing songs and trying to be discovered and get a record deal and something like that. Seems, that was never your. That was scene. not interesting to me. That sounded awful. That sounded horrible. <laughs> and I just and and I didn't like the. I don't like ladder climbing. I don't like toadying. I don't like making my art sound like what other people want it to sound like and I'm not really interested in making that much money or trying to like have a career that's based on a gamble and sure. I saw my first MySpace music page and I went oh my god it's not a gamble anymore it's just work now it's just a job yeah like now you just put in your hours and you find your people and you 
and you you connect with them and you keep making the stuff like instead of making stuff for people you find the people who like the stuff you make and yeah. then you become friends with them and you go sleep on their couch sometimes when you play in their town and that's like that's <laughs> how it works and i saw i feel like i really saw a a path as soon as my space music started and um it continued with twitter more than with facebook or myspace for me so have you been approached by mm -hmm. the the regular record company no. industrial complex no I don't think they're interested in me either. <laughs> I well, do. I mean, you, you, you have an amazing weird. voice, though. You know. Like, well, yeah, but like my music's really eclectic. It's a lot of different styles, and I don't behave myself, and I'm not the easiest to promote. And <laughs> how I would just you, like, how would you describe not behaving yourself? Um, I don't. I, I, I like. I mean, I mean, I like to be in charge of things. Sure. I like to drive. So you don't take you direction, you, or, or the kind of direction that you would expect a record company. It would, would have to be. It would have to be artist. like a specific I don't think they person. Care that much. Chris yeah. Brown has a record deal. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, they're not that picky, really. No. But it's more that like, I just don't feel like I'm a hit maker for anybody in particular. Like maybe a little boutique label sometime, kind of like, like the what's Ani's label, Righteous Babe, or some mm -hmm. kind of some kind of like small boutique situation maybe, but or like getting together with a bunch of friends to form something, but not like I just don't see any appeal in. The point, like, like it seems the like big, I the could. The big AR exec, you know, walks in. Well, yeah, in like new. you, so like a, you know, like a song Anchorage. placement would be nice and so on. But like, I can sell my music on Bandcamp and iTunes and stuff, and continue just touring and working and make a living. Um, or I can take a gamble and let someone else tie up all my content and have ownership in it, and that just grosses me out. And I can then maybe I'll earn ten percent of what they earn but yeah. they would have to sell 10 times as much. And I don't think they can or will. I just don't. Like, I don't think that there's a way I win in that scenario. So I just like doing it myself. I'll tell you what, you're doing so. great doing it. Uh, can you uh, give us another song? Uh, yeah, someone's asking if Strumbum's always on tour with me. Strumbum is sometimes on tour with me, and sometimes there are some other up. folks. I have a bunch of different Names guys. picking up. <laughs> you're all excited. That's I'm cool. very excited. Yeah, I, like I think it. it's good. My parents will be really thrilled about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, some sometimes sometimes it's Brian, sometimes it's Scott, sometimes it's Seth, sometimes I got a bunch of different kind of people who play with me depending on when they're available because they all do their own cool stuff. Like Brian's got a project called Lonely Child. He's a he's a producer. He's a studio guy. He produced my last record uh, or mixed and mastered my last record. That's true. And uh, hopefully we'll mix and master some more in the yeah. future. And uh, and then like Scott, who also plays with me, is a solo touring artist himself, and he's awesome. And there's like this big music community that I'm lucky to be a part of and they're all incredible players. Strumbum, so. plug all your stuff. Plug your stuff, Strumbum. Yeah. Lonely Child. Where can they find it? Lonelychild.bandcamp.com Yell Lonely Child Lonely into Child. empty hallway. Lonely and just yell it and I'll, I'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say it three uh, times. Yeah. Lonelychild.bandcamp.com I also co-wrote a super awesome pop country rap crossover song called Two Step. Okay. By Laura Bell Bundy, and if you buy it, I'll get a little cut of that, so that would really help me out. <laughs> nice. Uh, That's all. And I just hang out with Marion. I'll tell you what. And I'm, uh, I think we are there all very glad that you do. Awesome. And I will be strumming my, my bum. <laughs> no, I think, listen, you're taking this the wrong way. It's not like about my you bum. You are the bum. I'm the bum. I don't strum. I don't yeah. strum my bum. You don't strum <laughs> bums, like for nickels, you know? I guess you are yeah. the bum. It would be bum strum is what I might do later tonight. That, oh, God. No, that is your own. Please put that on Urban Dictionary. Uh, <laughs> bum strum. Bum strumming. Uh, so uh, what do you have for us? No hobo. Says no Jack. hobo. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's our other. Uh, our other. Uh, oh, Make sure you know cool. hobo that. Yep. <laughs> strum my bum. No hobo. No hobo. No hobo. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do a couple more songs here. I thought uh, actually, um, let's do, let's do one pretty one. This is called "Good Old Girl." This is a uh, ode to the Mars Rover spirit, old Mars Rover. The old Mars Rover. Old Mars Rover spirit. Come on. My, my love. My oh love gee. Spirit. Never forget. And uh, and it's also about uh, it's it's about the ships. It's about the vehicles that take you places. The old beat up inanimate objects. Do you talk to your car ever? Sure. Not to imply your car is old and beat up, but you know, no. mine, mine, mine's got some miles on it. You, you talk to it while it's going uphill or something. You're like, yeah, and uh, and you can do it, baby. You're so, you know, I've, I've, I pet my car and make <laughs> sure she you knows. You do it I in like that it. accent. It, Come in, on, baby. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. I speak earth, wind, and fire to my car. <laughs> As you um, should. Yeah. So, Ladies uh, and gentlemen, one more time, Mary and Cole. This is called Good Old Girl. Good 
She's a good old girl My good old girl Lived too long and seen too much All over scabs and scars and such But she's a pretty girl Kind of pretty girl If you cock your head and squint If you recognize the prince of space and time Doing what they do Shepherding her through Truth will stem her pride And lies will turn her tide It's far too much to take But my girl don't know when to break So she'll make, she'll make a way She's a good old girl She'll fly true She'll fly true Her structure sound Her clock is wound Through mistreatment and neglect She'll give whatever she's got left And she's run aground She's run aground But on the weakest breath of wind She'll up and navigate the dead of love and lies Doing what they do Good old girl, she'll fly true. She'll fly Did uh, that just get added to Urban Dictionary while we watched? I believe so. Yeah. Strum yeah. Bum? I believe Strumbum is now on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> you made it. That's, that's your awesome. career has reached Thanks, its pinnacle. There we go. Yeah, quit. <laughs> Drop the mic. Oh, quit. What? Uh, what are you going to $200 a day, though? I made it to <laughs> Uh, I feel like you have more songs about Firefly than there were episodes of Firefly. That's po that's possible. <laughs> I actually love I, I I love Firefly very much. It changed my life to watch it. So it just it it. What oh. was it about about Firefly specifically? It was. Uh, I think I it was it was where I was as much as the show. I suddenly saw a TV show as a series of steps that some people took to create it. Like someone 
wrote it and someone pitched it and then someone funded it and then they cast it and they built the stuff and then they lit it and then they shot it and then they edited it and then they mastered and you know sent it. you know like I suddenly saw that as a series of steps and I thought hey I don't know how to make make a record but I do know all the steps to making a record like I could just learn the ones I don't know and I just put it together and you make a project and that pro that project that they made was so beautiful and so perfect even though it was short lived that um <laughs> I thought that's worth making, like that's worth doing, and I can do those steps, and so I did. So I made my first record because I saw Firefly, and then after I made my first record, I got commissioned to do a record about Firefly, which was even more awesome. So that is yeah. that is pretty impressive. Now you said it was it was mm -hmm. where you were when you saw it, like what what was happening, you know, in in your life before. Uh, you decided, you know, you were inspired by that. So you're like gunning for Terry Gross now, aren't you? I'm asking yeah. questions, man. This we got good. time you're, for no, Phil. No, you're doing a great job. You're doing you're a great job. No one's asked like, job. no one's asked questions like this before. Um, I, I think well, that's what you, 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 you come to the place where we make Paula Dean as Hitler uh, on a country fried cross. Well, uh, we, we told you we'd class it up when we came. So <laughs> yeah, you that's certainly what we're doing. did. Um, we, uh, we, uh, what was it about being there? I think I was creatively frustrated, um, but not for lack of opportunity around me, just because the barriers were inside my own head. And mm -hmm. the bar like the barriers in my head fell down when I saw that. And I think I could have maybe seen something else amazing and it could have done it too, but it happened to be Firefly. Um, and I think because there was such a, a community feel to it, like the, it felt like a community of people who loved it made it. And that reminded me of like, you know, being in high school and making a theater production or being yeah. like, I, I live in very much a musical community. I grew up in a music community, making something together that you care about. I thought that's worth doing. I can do that. And um, it was empowering in a way. And I think it was just, I was creatively frustrated, but it was my fault in a way, or my, I, my short sight. So what did, what did you see and as the It was the, the blinders came off. Um, I, didn't, I didn't even see any obstacles. I just didn't see any possibility. And I think that it was of, more like- Of completing it? of doing anything. Like I just didn't see that I could do something. I didn't, I, it, the, the lack of empowerment was really what was there. And if I could do something now, it would be to sort of spread that empowerment to other people to help them realize, well, you might not be, you know, the incredible artist or expressionist that you think someone else is, but you can pick up some crayons and freaking do something. You can take some stickers and put them on a piece of paper. You can Photoshop, you can, you can take some pictures, you can write something, you can write wh whatever, just like make something and, and let those barriers fall down in your mind and you might find that you like it and you might find it's good for you. So I would like imagine that you probably get some of that line. feedback from mm -hmm. fans of yours that, that you inspire them, right? Yeah, art, art engenders more art, I think. I mean, that's, that's why like Firefly made me respond to it. And that's always been happening and it's nothing new. Like, I mean, there's fan fiction and then there's also like fan art and then, but then there's also kinds of, um, uh, th I feel like that's not a lot different from like a bunch of Renaissance painters who are influenced by each other. They'd see someone else's painting and go, oh, I, I am now inspired to do something like that. So, yeah. Is there anything other than, than Firefly that makes, I mean, I, from listening oh, to your work. tons of things, like, tons of things. But that's the one that Firefly is what makes it into the songs more than anything else, right? Well, just, uh, just as a, well, I had an album commissioned about it is why. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, but uh, those, all those songs are also about lots of other things. And uh, like, there's lots of layers. I could uh, intro a song as being about five or six different things and they're all totally true. They have a lot of, they're like onions, <laughs> little song onions. So everyone's going to find something that's yeah. in there. If someone's looking for the Firefly reference, there's going to be the Firefly reference, but well, it's I want also to, like, I about want, your car. I want to, yeah, exactly. Well, I want to write something that Firefly fans will really, really love and that that community of people who are very close to me um, will enjoy. But I also want my grandma to be able to dig it, and my grandma would never get Firefly necessarily. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I have always, I've really kind of, uh, I enjoy Firefly a lot, but I've never really liked the theme song. But I enjoy <laughs> you singing the theme song. Like, and I know, I don't know. I know people love, and like, mm -hmm. it's it's a... Uh, Sunny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but That's I, okay. That's allowed. But I, I enjoy the way, I enjoy the way you do it. That is Thank that you. is a, uh, a, a, mm -hmm. a compliment for me. Well, it comes from the, from the gut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a raw, passionate cry. So, All right. Yeah. What seven <laughs> things are this next song about? What seven things is this next song about? Yeah. Um, donuts and, okay. uh, and fatty food in general, and um, an, a car accident that I witnessed up in Anchorage. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's true. Uh, I'm not saying no, but it's just it's great. That's a great segue. It's very much in the vein <laughs> of this audience that it's like, well, it's about sprinkles and uh, deep yeah. fried uh, lard, and also a car, car wreck that crippled a yeah, boy and Hitler. 
<laughs> and no, Hitler. No, not Hitler. Uh, this is about human nature, and uh, 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 there's a... Guy Smiley. Yeah, yeah, Guy Smiley knows what it is. I know Guy Smiley. Hi, Guy Smiley. Um, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> No, not sprinkles and AIDS. Sprinkle? No. Not that. No. It could be about that. I don't know. You interpret what you like. This is about this is about human nature and how we are incapable of doing all the things we want to do and how we keep doing the things we shouldn't do. And there's not a lot we can do about it. There we go. It's called the Volvo Song, and it's based on an accident I actually witnessed at the quarter of Lake Otis and Fifteenth in Anchorage, in which a Volvo, an old Volvo, hit the short bus. Oh. And there should be a force field around the short bus. Like should I don't be. know why there isn't. You just no it one should be like one of those like like, short bus. like those ICBM missile systems yeah, yeah, around yeah, the yeah, short yeah. bus. They should uh -huh. get the big bus. Well, but there weren't enough of them. Yeah. Nobody was hurt in the accident, bus. thankfully. They should put the they short bus in a larger bus. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Why That's what they should do. So these kids this tiny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I rode the short bus when I was little. Yeah. Um, so that car wreck seemed like a metaphor for, you know, my life at that time. So, Jeez. Yeah. So here's how it goes. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Marion Cole. This is the Volvo song. Cut that out, my darling. There is something we must discuss. How with cell phone in hand, you ran my Volvo through the special bus. And I am more a Volvo than any other kind of car. Reliable and safe and Scandinavian and square. Ah, na, 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 na. You've been in all the corners and you put out all the lights. Ah, ah, now I want to know, baby, how you propose to make You bounced that check. Why didn't you think the Gauntlet fees were gonna set yourself by back? Yeah, and oh my darling sugar pie, why'd you stay up all last night and put off your packing and eat too much and nearly go and miss your flight? Na -na 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 -na. Oh, you know you'd be miserable after that little white lie. So why did you, 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 why? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to open for Joko, opening for TMBG at some point. Um, so if anyone can make that happen, uh, yeah, yeah. Hit me up. Uh, no, this actually a boy told me once about this particular song. I can never date you because someday you're going to write a song like that about me. And then I felt pretty bad. Um, and then I had to explain to him that the song was not about a boy, it was about me. I wrote this song for myself because I did all of these things. And so I wrote a song about it and then I did them all again. So you na 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 you should not you na 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 you should not I don't know what you should and should not Shame on you, babe, shame on you, babe. Always oh, good know what you're gonna do, babe. You know what you should and should not that I die or die Maybe when you're older, baby, maybe sober and then you'll stop picking sets and picking nets and picking fights i know i'm far from perfect baby and i know i'm hardly good but uh -oh, we get so much further if you would do what you should do darling if seeing were caring what a different line we'd take if knowing we're doing what a different world we'd make what we want and what we need we very 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 seldom do i want a smaller waist i want donuts too na, 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 na. and we visit on each other all the slings of self-defeat and we cannot dodge the arrows of undisciplined retreat i'd be better if my love were not so timid and controlled I'd sleep closer if I were not both so bony and so cold. Thank you. You're, you're good at singing. Has anyone ever told you that? Thank you. I have That's practiced good. a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, what is the... Uh, the craziest experience uh, in in a positive way that you've ever had with a fan 
that you know that you've ever interacted oh. with somebody and it just like totally blew your mind and changed the way that you thought about life. I feel like that happens every week though. Like if you just if you if you like a carpet bombing, your brain is just constantly exploding. I'm writing a song about that right now actually. That just carpet add, bombing? No. Oh. No, about the brain exploding from the interactions with people thing because I interact with so many people. And there's often not really mental space to remember exactly who they are or exactly where I met them, but the interaction stick. Mm. Like if I if I haven't seen someone in three years and I don't recognize them and they have to tell me their name again and tell me how I know them online and every, you know, once we've got that like reintroduction out of the way, if if they bring up something we talked about before, that is like sealed in there permanently. Yeah. And that's amazing. I feel like I just am imprinted and like engraved with every conversation we've ever had. And it's really, um, it's really intense and it's, um, it's hard to process all of it, but a lot of it comes out in songs. A lot of songs have little bits of things that I've talked about with people that have, have impacted me greatly. So there's got to be I'm one. Give me like one. Give me one, one story. Uh, you didn't think musically. <laughs> well, some of them are I, the ones I'm thinking of most. Like first are the most kind of personal and private, where I wouldn't necessarily want to like uh, discuss it. But uh, you for, can dance for them, around I mean. it. Yeah, people have had very emotional reactions sometimes to things during shows that are about like healing or grieving something, and it's sometimes well, really amazing. Because it seems like I mean, uh, even just talking to you, that a lot of your songs and your story mm -hmm. is about you know a, a breakthrough of of some sort, either yeah. mentally or artistically or empowerment. Finding I think. a community a, and empowerment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's something about uh, trying to trip the mouse traps in your own head that keep you from expanding outside your own walls. And once you sometimes trip that, what you thought was a trap that was keeping you from doing something, you find out it was nothing at all. That it was only this big and it doesn't really even sting when you get it on your finger, right? It's, 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 there's something emotional about trying to push that boundary when, yeah. you, when you sing and try to share with someone, I've tripped some of these boundaries and, and you can too. And I'm still here, I'm okay. Like I pushed some of those levers. I, I, I did the scary thing, you know, and maybe you can too. I did, the, I did the living without any security, without any home thing for a long time and I'm okay. And I managed it and I got out safe and you, you know, it's, it's yeah. Wait, living without, you were homeless? Not homeless, I think homeless would be a bad way to put it because okay. I, have, I have friends and even family who have been homeless and I wasn't that, but I didn't have anywhere to live for about a year and a half. And I like- This was how long ago? 2009? started and uh and i i kind of couch surfed and mm -hmm. house sat and made sure never to stay anywhere for longer than two weeks because i didn't want to wear out any welcomes or wear out any friendships and that is like so a really, that was it's a scary experience but and it has weird psychological ramifications that you work through for a really long time i think like the but idea of not the idea of not knowing the idea of not having any stuff and of not knowing where your stuff's going to be and not having anywhere to put your stuff and not being able to have any stuff. Like that's insecure for a lot of, uh, especially Americans, but uh, going through that experience made me realize how little you need any of that and that you could like, you can do that and you can get through it if you, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. And how long did that happen? Uh, it was kind of like a year and a half before I was paying rent somewhere again that I could actually like leave stuff. So, and so I was just... What was, what was the Kindness first thing that you left? Do you remember the first thing that you left in your apartment after having a place to leave things? Probably my dead cat. Oh, good God! I mean, well, like, I, have the, I have the ashes of my family cat, Zippy. Okay. And they travel with oh, me everywhere. Okay. Um, ashes. Make sure you put ashes on the end of what, that. What did you think? It was like rotting? Or? I don't know. You're the one. <laughs> it's like, it's just my dead cat. <laughs> like, I didn't have a place to leave it, so I stuffed it in a knapsack that I took around. <laughs> No wonder you worried about burning bridges with your friends. I have this stinky dead cat. Uh, yeah, that's why we had to leave pretty quickly. And we went. <laughs> no, it, uh, no, we have the family cat in ash, like the ashes in a little tin, and yeah. and he's been to all fifty states with me, and he's been all over Europe, and he's been, you know, yeah, no hobo, no hobo, <laughs> no hobo. Uh, Thank you, chat. So that was Thank that was the first thing that you that you remember or that that you can. Well, he was always like with me, and and so I, I brought my cat into my house and I put it in the window, and there's my cat. Now my cat's in the window. I wasn't there allowed to own pets in that house. So, <laughs> so there. That'll that'll Landlord show Landlord never knew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said there's you, more. There's more on my dead cat on my blog. If you look up Zippy on my blog, you can find some saga of Zippy. There so, we go. Marion called tell you what. Get, get the Zippy extended universe, which I'm sure is. Uh, I have pictures yeah. of him in 50 states. He's such a great cat. He comes when you call, and he doesn't make a mess, and he's like, and TSA doesn't even know. <laughs> Nor do and, they need to. Nope. No, I don't. I don't. 
Uh, so you said uh, your fans that you've had mm -hmm. people that have had huge, you know, big reactions during shows. Yeah, I mean, I think that art can help you work through stuff. And art can change your mind about things. Like, I've never had my mind changed about politics by someone waving a sign or yelling at me or arguing with me. Yeah. But I've had my mind changed about politics a lot by seeing a film or by hearing an album or by seeing a play or something like that. You know, I've, I felt like those things can access a different part of you. Yeah. And, and whenever I am privileged to be a party of that for someone else, like someone having a change or having a little wall fall down inside themselves, whether it's to let them, like feel opportunity and like they can make something or they could do something or they could change something or maybe it's to be able to grieve or maybe to be able to remember or go back and think of something then that it, I feel incredibly lucky when I get to be around for that. I mean, but that is because of your art, though, right? I mean, like, people well, watch, I mean, I mean, nobody watches the Avengers and mm -hmm. they're like, well, that, I'm going to change my opinion on national security. Oh, like, well, no, but more Avengers. Exactly. The, the Incredibles totally changed my life, well, though. They, I was weeping. It was so great. It was oh, no, just amazing. Absolutely. So. But I mean, but but that mm -hmm. is, I mean, you would agree that that is yeah. a sign of, of the quality of the art, right? I, I hope so. I think that's for others to say. That's not, that's well, not that's, my job. For me, to I am saying. I feel very, well, thank you. I, I, I feel privileged when I get to be in at that moment, and I think it's a chemistry thing where sometimes you have the right message and sometimes they're in the right place to hear it because they're not always. Yeah. And, and is then that when that, that happens, it's to very do exciting. With your art? Maybe. Me, or maybe it's just a natural outgrowth of having people in intimate smaller concerts instead of big giant ones. Or, or I don't know. It's just, that's just I think what it is. Played, it's what you, is. You, it's you the could, best part of You could play an job. arena and you'd have. 30,000 people job. crying. They'd all be weeping. Oh, yeah. They'd all change their lives. They'd all go home and make art. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. I think uh, maybe uh, one more song. Um, yeah, one more song. I don't know what to do, though. I hadn't planned this far. Uh, no, not Freebird. We can do Freebird. Let's do Freebird. Can you do Freebird? Yeah, let's do Freebird. That's the perfect thing. It's actually my favorite song. Uh, this, this is Freebird. This is um, a song for people who request Freebird. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Marion Call. This is also since you asked for record labels. Record so, labels. Yeah, yeah. And for that guy at the bar who... Just don't be that guy at the bar. Just don't... No touching. No touching. No touching. It's not hard. Yeah. No hobo. <laughs> <laughs>
out of sight And lock the cage up in the attic Not gonna stay where you want me to Play what you want me to Right when you want me to Na, na, na And when I go You'll finally know There's things I don't sing Not even for you So there we go, Leonard Skinner's Freebird uh, for everybody yep. who requested. You got your ass cap covered, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in and watching and staying late and listening oh, to uh, to Marion and And please Brian buy play. some music. If you like the music, please buy it. That's my only source of income. I'll, That's just, just saying. There. I'll tell you what, we have seen uh, a ton of those links in the chat room. Yes. So hopefully a uh, big, uh, you know, uh, a spike for the band camp sales. We'll take it. We'll take uh, it. Tonight here uh, with you at NSFW and uh, Brian. Dude, amazing work. Thank you. Great work. Hey. Uh, thank you to Jammer B. Thank you to everybody watching. Thank you, studio watching. audience. Thank you Thank for you coming. to studio, the studio audience. Can we go to, uh, can you turn those lights on? Go to the studio audience here. They definitely Yay. came out and stayed. Thank you. Uh, very, I very good work. You. Thank you. Uh, all right, again, at Marion Call on Twitter. Uh, Brian, what's your Twitter again? This is B Ray, Lonely Child. It's my music. Check it out. There we go. This is NSFW Show. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.